so of course we are taking more than uh, the the commonly practiced uh, precautions but you are absolutely right we can miss how can we miss because the peer patient could be in that period of those seven days period. and during those seven days he or she would have come visited the dialysis unit at least three times uh, uh, two or three times two so times yes yeah. chances chances are that we can miss these patients if we do yeah. is going to be an ongoing exercise whereby we will have to close down clean the this thing take samples ensure that there is no covid left in the uh, dialysis unit open up again and be prepared that such an exercise may have to be repeated one more time because yeah. it's not going to be a two week phenomena three week phenomena everyone's guess is it's going to linger on and on and let's let's see we, everyone is seeing light at the end of the tunnel but but how long is the tunnel which we, we don't know yeah what but we are practicing for our for our surgery is we are doing only one surgery per ot in 24 hours so we are doing one surgery we are just shutting down the ot and we are using that ot in the next day but for i mean practically for you for the dialysis machine it won't be possible i think for you even you yeah. have to isolate that machine also in a single room that would be a difficult for you we are right. actually right. we are struggling with that and answering your other question about peritoneal dialysis i think of course the one aspect is you asked about how are we uh, dis disposing of the fluid where well, we are taking the same precaution this is not the first time we are experiencing that we had similar issues when we were uh, dialyzing uh, through peritoneal dialysis our patients who were hepatitis c positive b positive yeah. or yeah. hiv positive so the same precautions we already have learned how to take care of uh, disposing of the fluid and for everyone else's sake for the non medicos here peritoneal dialysis is is the other form of dialysis where we take the help of body's own peritoneal membrane and it's a fluid kind of dialysis where the the patients can dialyze themselves at home or the family members can do it for them at home they don't have to travel to dialysis uh, unit so this has actually come as a boon to people who were already on on uh, peritoneal dialysis uh, chronically so all that we are advising them is to have adequate supply of their uh, of the the pd solution so that they don't fall short of it because that's a life saving thing for them the other challenge is if a patient uh, especially and now this this works true for uh, a country like india very soon the way even the rich countries have fallen short of ventilators we know if the if the situation is, is really uh, worsens we are going to be terribly short of dialysis machines as well so yeah peritoneal dialysis may actually come to everyone's rescue here and we are probably going to uh, uh, go back to often forgotten uh, uh, modality that is peritoneal dialysis there are not too many unfortunately not too many takers of of this even in our country uh, we when we were uh, medical students we we were taught about peritoneal dialysis in a big way when, when whenever there was a a resource constrained uh, scenario peritoneal dialysis was a big time life saver for for patients we may have to go back to the time tested peritoneal dialysis at least for some few few uh, subsequent months because uh, uh, that could be the need of the hour so in that context if we are going to insert peritoneal dialysis catheter in these patients again the challenge would be uh, we should not be allowing the healthcare providers to get infected to go near the patient yeah. and then and then yeah. uh, so again the policy would be we will first test these patients and uh, yeah. the report the turnaround time of the reporting is about 8 hours at our hospital so we will first wait for the 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 uh, report to come back uh, ensure that the patient is uh, uh, covid negative and then go ahead and if the patient is covid 19 positive obviously we'll be uh, taking uh, due precaution pp you may ask me questions so why not why not go ahead and and uh, 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 take all precautions and, and and do it on day one itself the answer is against the the, the yeah yeah so, so, so. i i think i think the best thing in between is this that we should have a ample of the investigation or diagnostic kit so at least we should diagnose the patient by that way we can save ourselves we can save the patient we can save the spread in the hospital and we can also we can also limit uh, the ppe is also we should not be wasting yes. the resources if the patient is negative if the patient exactly. is positive only then we should be so all the components are not for all the patients you you uh, there are three levels level 1 level 2 and level 3 to use the component of the ppe 
so if we do the enough uh, ample testing then only we can save on the ppe part also we can save ourselves we can prevent the spread also and one more thing i would like to mention here how we are using the safe evacuation of the peritoneal co2 or we are preventing the exposure to our staff members there what we are doing is we are putting sodium hypochlorite in a test drain and we are connecting that test drain to a single uh, abdominal port through which we are going to escape or we are, we are going to evacuate the co2 and then we are connecting that test drain to the uh, hepa filter so through the hepa filter so there are two channels one your co2 is coming in contact with the sodium hypochlorite and from the sodium hypochlorite solution it is going again to the hepa filter and through the hepa filter we are you know clearing or purifying the co2 so that there should not be any exposure to any staff member so this is the indian jugad it is not it is not recommended anywhere but this is a just like a uh, but temporary measures which we are taking i i think you should do that I, it's better to overdo things rather than do yeah, anything yeah yeah, yeah. Dr. Kuller, uh, I would like to ask you that uh, I mean, uh, post-COVID situation, do we have a COVID-19 uh, certification or something like that for medical staff so that they can uh, access to those patients? Uh, and also, as the doctor Sabu said, we don't have to uh, waste our PP resources. So, what can we do? We uh, have any kind of thing? We're going to write the book on it. We're going to write COVID certification book with you guys. Yeah, yeah the COVID certification is available in the URL. It's, no, COVID certification is taken. You can do certified COVID-19. The URL is available. What about COVID-19 certification? So I, I, hope, in, in, I hope that is the reality you see, but I'll, I'll take you to the medical aspect of what you're asking. So normally, whenever we get any kind of viral infection, and, and that is the, the concept behind the vaccines, so you 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 would believe tend to believe that you if you had a viral infection um, uh, once you probably would be immune to the, the the same infection subsequently. Now whether that happens with the COVID nineteen as well is is yet to be seen. So if you test someone and you get uh, antibodies positive in the blood, so IgM that would mean this is an ongoing infection. That means it's been a recent infection. Now, subsequently, IgM gets converted, and, and once well, so subsequently you get uh, elimination of IgM, and you have positivity for IgG. So once you once the blood is positive for immunoglobulin Z, IgG antibodies, normally you would tend to believe that now you are protected against that particular virus. Whether that holds true for COVID-19, we don't have the answer. Whether during this period, while we are wanting to be uh, one up on the virus, the virus may tend to mutate, and then we have lost the battle again. So, so there is not going to be a kind of certification possible that look, this particular staff member is immunoglobulin G positive. Now he or she is immune and can boldly uh, face the COVID-19 patients. Well, I don't think uh, that is ever going to be the case. We will always have to uh, take due precautions. And everyone needs to understand that that we are going to have to live with the COVID uh, uh, coronavirus subsequently. It's not going to go. It probably, hopefully, will become part of our life. The kind of scare we had with the uh, H1N1 and and, and uh, Corona, the previous version, and MERS, and so many things. Yeah. So we were terribly scared. There were dreadful diseases, but now, I mean, we are not uh, that kind of scared. When we we come to know that that there is an H1N1 patient in the intensive care unit on ventilator, I I, I uh, two years ago when it first came into being, when when it first surfaced, we were terribly scared even to enter the that that particular area. Not any longer. So this is this is the virus only who is going to give the certificate. We cannot uh, give any certificate because if there is any mutation happens in the future, there would be another genome and against the another genome. We need to develop our immunity. So then, this immunity would not be sufficient. This IgG would not be sufficient uh, against that another strain. So I think the virus is very intelligent. Yes, uh, Sasha has yeah. joined us from Canada. Um, Hi, Sasha. Canada, eh? How are you? Hello, everybody. All right. What, what's going uh, on there? Right before I joined you, I was seeing the program on the TV. Uh, I think it was CNN, and there was an interview with a person, with a patient, 
actually, he, he was uh, 40, some 43 years old, and uh, he was a ventilator support. He was very sick for several years. He was on ventilator su support, and he survived. So, um, as uh, I've heard uh, many times, uh, uh, don't come for a second, the ventilator, we all know uh, what was going to happen to the patient. And the ventilator means that uh, he'll die sooner or later anyway. However, I was pleased to see someone who was on ventilator and who is alive. That's one thing. Number two is that he is still... Ah, uh, he's washing hands, he's wearing mask and uh, so on. Uh, do, do you still, if, if he developed antibodies, uh, do, you, do, you, do you believe he still has to be careful with uh, all precautions? Sasha, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. Please. Please go ahead, Lord yeah, but, uh, you know, being on a ventilator doesn't mean that you're going to die, but the probability now increases because you're in yeah. such a bad condition and you're intubated and now you're on a ventilator. And so the numbers we're seeing, it's, um, you know, 60 to 70 percent uh, are going to pass away once they get to that level. So we really need to do... 30 to 40 percent will survive. Yeah, certain LOP people will survive, but but really we need to, to create a treatment. And we have been looking at some of the treatments that are right now going through clinical trials right now. Um, there's an R, um, an mRNA-1273 uh, treatment that's being developed. Uh, there's uh, the treatments from Gilead Science, um, Rendesafir, which is being developed. Uh, hydroxychloroquine, of course, is, um, has big press, but we're not sure how any of these things work. But the thing is, we do need to get treatments and then the vaccines, which are right now being developed, but they're a long time away. So like Dr. Cooler said, what are you doing in the meantime? Now, they've already created a way to operate, and I believe Fiat, as of yesterday, said they're going to test people and try to get them back to the plants by doing testing and also applications that they report. It's almost like a self-reporting that uh, they're still COVID-19 certified, so Fiat can reopen up their plants because we're going to have a big economic pandemic that's going to take place uh, right now. I mean, you know, for the next, what are we going to do the next um, maybe 12 months before a vaccine comes? I've got an idea. If we start yeah. dedicating more and more people who have to stay home to um, run these tests or process them. I mean, there's so many new jobs that we can create out of here. Just like when um, they thought that the, uh, the postal service was going down because everything became electronic. And all of a sudden, Amazon boomed up, right? And that was a bigger need for postal usage. So we just need to say there's going to be more professional jobs that are going to be required to help us process the test, become certified. And we saw this with ISO certifications, right? Or just like your medical certifications. We're just, we're going to have to implement new jobs. And we will create these new jobs. And people will be able to apply for them. It'll be training. You'll have to do some training. Yeah, I would apply for a position of coronavirus tester. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't want to get near the virus. Yeah, but, but, but in the meantime, some, some of our uh, industries have been around for a long time, like the airline industry. Okay, how are we are going to fly people from uh, country to country or even throughout the states unless we can get the airlines back operational? And the only way I can think of is you have to have testing. In other words, you have to test the people and certify them, just like Dr. Kohler was saying that this is how we get people back into, um, you know, kidney dialysis by testing, cleaning, and doing it as much as you can to mitigate the possibility of the spread of a, apparently a virus that loves to, to um, spread itself. In New Zealand, though, they basically put a hard clamp down on people coming in and out and uh, uh, the numbers we got and, and ANCAP maybe can share us the new numbers, but there was only like 94 total people infected and one person who passed away, but they basically shut down the entire country and blockaded it. Uh, but now once you do that, what is the next step? And this is, this is something which I have not really seen, but we're looking at what, what to basically what Dr. Cooler said what, is basically what? testing people. You we're know. writing the book. We're not reading the book that's been written for us. And I think we have to take a look at that, that 
you know, unlike chess moves where you got all the pieces on the board and you know what each chess piece does, we don't know what each chess piece is right now. We don't know what their moves are. And so you and I, we're so used to, and Sasha and Anka, we're and business people, we're so used to planning out, but there's no certainty. There's no, we, we're writing this book right now. And as we write it, I, this is what I tell people as a scientist and in, in, in the engineering world, but I know when I worked in the labs, we wrote down daily logs so that we could track back anything that could have happened and retrace what, what ha our steps to have created that. So, you know, we have to look at the cause and the effects of each of our moves right now, as opposed to what is my move going to be? We, we have to write it down. Okay, we made this move and then boom, it got reinfected. Look at China right now. China, we can look at. They they re they reopened some of their, their people and told them to go out and they got reinfected. Um, so, well, oh, uh, well, just, just also to let you know that uh, at twelve thirty, which is about forty-five minutes, from now, wow, Dr. Barbara No, who was the chief medical correspondent for NBC News, will be joining us, and Dr. Markowitz will be coming back. But if you guys need to take breaks and come back, you can do so. Well, I think it's uh, we need to take time with uh, Dr. Sagu. It's his time coming. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I'm going to take a break around in about fifteen minutes, so I'm going to be, uh, but I'll be back. I you were expecting it. So we were expecting Dr. Philip Yu uh, to join uh, the show with Dr. Sagu, but uh, he is still not on. So maybe uh, we can reschedule it uh, as per the available time. Oh, sure. Yeah, that, that, that's that's no problem. You know. Okay, so this is the latest stats that we're looking at right now. Yes, look at this. And, you know, the U.S. carries almost 50% of this. The U.S. alone carries 50%. Oh, Lord. Yeah, where... This is the current stat. What kind of hey, I mean, we're smarter hey, than this? And where's where, where's India on this and kid? I see US. We're India the 21st right? position. 21st position. You didn't even make the top 20? We are not interested. We we haven't, but then we are, we are, we, we are, we are by just behind. Wow. We have two doctors on the panel, and I think uh, they are doing a good job as all doctors are in India. That's why we are not on top uh, 20. Yeah, right. Uh, they're having these kind of talks and they're, they're, they locked down, but they also did something that I found interesting, which was what I kept saying needed to happen is they're centralizing their communities and they're paying yeah. attention to each of those communities and addressing them as they become infected. As opposed, you know, they did a, an official huge lockdown. They pray a lot. They're, they're calm. They're not panicked. Uh, right. They're not worried about money, Nick. That's the problem. Look at the difference, right? The people are worried more about money. We, we, we escalated the chart by more than 50%. The people who are not worried about money are gone. They're off the chart the other way. So I would think about that. Yeah, the, the Dow, by the way, is up about 200 points. Uh -huh, you're thinking about the money again. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I just, I just check, it, check it every five minutes just to make sure since we handle people's pension funds all over the country, we got to make sure that they're they're going to still be around. Yeah, and and, and um, of course, the Federal Reserve is going to pump another $2.2 trillion or $2.3 trillion into the economy. So we're, we're, we're doing some big economic stimulus to get to get over the hump. But I have seen nothing in terms of how me mechanically uh, once they, they we believe we're going to apex and then start coming down, what we're going to do next. OK, there has been no plan on what to do next. Well, after. Nick, we're not going down. Look at our look at our rates. We're higher than any other country in the world. by. Yeah. Well, you know, well, the thing is, the, the theory theory is that the social isolation is actually going to work because the thing is, people can't infect people if you're away from people. So that that theory, but, but we officially have not even officially locked down in some states. Some yeah, states. I, I know, but the, the the thing is, there's what what is the next step? In other words, okay, let's say that that we start bringing down the rate. What is the next step to get some of the economic sector working? Our restaurants are closed. Our hospitals are closed. Our businesses are closed. Our our um our our. But we can open are open right now. Pardon. What's open? In India, all our medical uh, hospitals and uh, medical uh, services, they are all open for 24 hours. Okay, the medical services, well, they may be open because yeah. uh, some, some some of our things are open because they're considered essential services. So yeah, medical... Yeah, yeah. Services uh, are our hospitals are open. And all, all our doctors are available 24 to 7 
on call and uh, they are doing double shifts and they are the front runners uh, fighting the covid situation and lot of doctors are volunteering uh, apart from medical services they are also volunteering different uh, task forces to manage the situation yeah and uh, the health minister who is heading the country health system he is also a doctor so i think that uh, i think that will really work yeah so you get the first one in their country and and, doctor. and, what, what, and about that test, uh, what about yeah. testing and kid are they testing people because the thing yes. is uh, i think for testing yeah. i think uh, doctor yeah. and doctor sabu must be having more uh, data you see then we have, we have we, yeah yeah doctor we are expanding our capacity of uh, investigation and i think we are not up to that extent the who has told us that at least there should be 15000 tests for 1 lakh population we are not reaching up to that capacity but yes uh, we are expanding our capacity now and uh, our health minister is also not only a doctor he is an ent surgeon so he knows well about the respiratory system and everything and the guidelines which he is giving that is i mean uh, tremendous work he is doing and uh, all the task force uh, members they are doing the very good job Uh, I think uh, in near future uh, we are going to expand our uh, investigation kits and everything because we have ordered some even the rapid test kits also along with the RT PCR. Hey, have you guys thought of uh, because you know guys don't have too many cases over there it looks like compared to us. Have you guys started uh, thinking about shifting or uh, some of the physicians over to the United States? We could use some help, guys. You know, <laughs> I would. Oh, <laughs> we don't think over here. We don't think. I mean, Doctor Gulen, you need to unmute your mic. Yeah. Uh, we and you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. well, you see, we we are actually gearing ourselves up because we don't know which way the uh, 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 pandemic going to take us, because. there is a lot of speculation on one hand we know that we are few weeks behind but at the same time uh, one school of thought is that yes we are already there and maybe the virus uh, in our country may not be that virulent it is contagious of course we all realize that but maybe it's not that virulent because we haven't had too many deaths so far fortunately but the the final word is not out as yet now there are a lot of theories whether it's something to do with the bcg whether it's something to do with the uh, virus already having got mutated i don't know the answer to that and we don't even know whether that indeed is the case or not but what we know for sure is that we may have tested few people because that was the need of the hour we didn't didn't have as many kits now we have them and we are testing more and more people but i think the the, the best part which was which was uh, done in our country was when the prime minister of the of the country decided to implement the lockdown rather early and this is probably what we could learn from the mistakes of some other countries so, so right. the good things have happened the good things have happened for our country is that we could do it at the right time that's number one whether yeah. that yeah. is showing its results now that's one secondly the there was some speculation that maybe the real numbers are more since we haven't tested uh, enough that's the reason why we are not uh, uh, coming out with those kind of figures well yes agree that may be the case but the the most important thing is that even if we were testing few people if the viral illness was bad enough we would have started having enough number of people uh, um, falling prey and uh, to the virus and 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 we would have started losing a lot of lives by now that is not the case we don't think we are going to miss people dying uh, of uh, corona virus and not even come to know at least in the in the in the uh, metropolitan uh, cities which are well equipped uh, uh, for all kind of uh, medical services so so the, the 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 general belief as of now is that maybe the the viral illness has been little kinder to us so far we don't know what is going to happen then there's a strong belief that that summers are going to set in maybe they're going to offer some respite i don't know whether that really happens or not because uh, there there is other side of the story as far as that is concerned but yes the, we are we are seeing some hope as far as this illness is concerned in this country i don't know what really happens and 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 uh, what transpires over the next uh, couple of weeks three weeks and these everyone in our country believes are the most crucial weeks 
ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ in the western most of the old people they are staying with the old age home so they are staying in the gathering maybe they are more affected and our old people they are less affected so we have more young population who is affected by this virus so that may be the reason for low mortality in india so there's another interesting aspect to it that is well a short while ago i had said that our patients uh, of chronic kidney disease especially the ones on dialysis or our transplant patients are more vulnerable they are they are immune compromised they don't have that kind of uh, immunity to fight with this viral illness but paradoxically that's very interesting observation what we have seen so far is that fortunately we haven't seen too many of our chronic kidney disease patients get into trouble with the virus so so as, again i would say we need more time to know whether this indeed is the case or not but if that indeed is the case then one of the explanations we have so far is that then the virus typically induces a cytokine storm it 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 uh, um, has it it set everything on fire in the body well if in a immunocompromised patient especially our chronic kidney disease patients they do not have that kind of fighting capacity in themselves maybe they are not able to react to the virus uh, in that a way in that a manner Uh, which will cause uh, a lot of problems to them so uh, something it's totally in contrast to what we had initially thought is going to happen so far is not the case and this is what we believe is the reason behind it but again we need few more weeks to know whether whether really our patients with chronic kidney disease are not having the bad kind of manifestations of coronavirus uh, whether indeed that's the case or not I mean there's in addition way. yeah in, okay. in addition to that yeah in addition to that uh, dr dinesh i think the young population is more mobile in india they are dishonest mm-hmm. they don't they, they don't follow the guidelines and our old people they they have less mobility they stay at home even the immunocompromised on dialysis patient diabetic patient who are have who are having the uncontrolled disease they are less mobile and they are in habit of following the guidelines because they are already diseased and they know how to uh, follow the guidelines and they know the results of them they will not follow the guidelines so our young population they are more mobile they are dishonest they are not following the guidelines that may be the reason that the young population or the healthy population is more affected by this virus and that is why they are recovering uh, uh, they are recovering fast because of good immunity maybe the immunity because of bcg also or any maybe other things also we have a good immunity so that is why the mortality rate is lower side in india at present well, you know i i think ankit you're you're just a wise old soul in a young body because uh, <laughs> <laughs> ankit abided by this like day one like there was no doubt in his mind he was going to lock his family down and protect them um so you know i i consider ankit the young one i got all the i, I got all the right advice from dr kullar and dr sabu so i'm just obeying the whatever the doctor says uh, there you go and, and and sasha and and willy you know mm-hmm. again we are all um young people who decided hey we want to lock down too but no one of the things so uh, one of my concerns has been uh some of the reinfections that we hear about or maybe that there's a covid 20 now like a second strain to this strain in your um medical field have you heard anything about this because we keep hearing people becoming really infected um and i don't know if that's media hype or because we don't have direct access to some of these doctors where it's being reported in china well, have you seen or heard anything anyone is it regarding reinfection reinfection of the recovery infection because we heard uh doc or you know have heard on the grapevine which i don't always trust but we've heard that um people have been released maybe 